Discover how the Word of God can bring a change in your life through the teachings of Bishop Eddie Addy. Bishop Eddie Addy is an assistant to Bishop Daniel Mills and serves as the resident bishop of the Macarius Church. Anointed, energetic, and a practical teacher, the servant of God will inspire you with practical teaching of the Word of God that will refresh you, energize you, and bring healing to your body, soul, and spirit. Now, to the message. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, ask God to speak to you, okay? Talk to God yourself. Ask him to minister to you and change something in your life. Day in, day out, as we come to hear his word, a change must take place. A transformation must take place so that we can be conformed to the image of the beloved son of the living God. Have your way, Lord. Thank you. Mighty God, Dalike Sobahadagada, Ramako Sayagadinia Hada, Shimoria Makande Liberados, Limia Hande Goradije Mahayagaza, De Tomika Baderi Ananjali Garades. Thank you, mighty God. We gave you praise. We gave you honor. Please open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your law. Thank you for choosing us today. Thank you for causing us to come. Thank you that you will satisfy us with the goodness of your house. In Jesus' name. Let strongholds break. Amen. Let demonic opposition against our progress, against our advancement, against our prosperity be pulled down. Amen. And let God be exalted in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Stages of dishonor. Stages of this honor is my title. Hello, am I on air? Am I on air? Okay, it's nice I hear. Hello? Praise the Lord. Okay. Should I come down? Or come? Hello? Am I on air? Praise God. Praise God. Okay. Stages of disloyalty and results of disloyalty. Dishonor. <laughs> disloyalty, not Dimitri. So... Stages, the annual disloyalty. <laughs> but I think on Sunday we talked about moving away from dishonor, both for the anointed person and then the recipients of anointed people must move away from dishonor because it's, it's, a, it's an unfortunate thing. So, Let's, uh, last week on Tuesday, what did we do? Signs of dishonor. Were you here or you were not here? How many were here? How many were not here? Okay, every time there's somebody who was not here, somebody was here. So make sure you're always around. <laughs> Beautiful. So we said that... Um, a sign of dishonor is when you are absent, if you remember. And then a sign of dishonor is um, when you, do, you don't call on a person. means you don't visit the person. You don't call on him. You don't pay catchy calls on a person. It's a sign of dishonor. So I've been watching my members. Those who have not visited me in my office, I'm watching them. It was interesting. Somebody just can say, I want to come to your house. On Sunday, somebody brought her, his, his wife. The two of them, they came and said, oh, 
we haven't been here for some time. We want to come and pay a, a ketsi call. I said it's a sign of honor. And it's a, it's a sign, it's, it's, it's a sign, I want to make the opposite of dishonor. It's a sign of not walking in dishonor. <laughs> it means you are not walking in dishonor. Do you understand? So, signs. You see, all these are being taught to. You have to use it to live. If you don't use it, I don't know whether it's the right thing to do. That you'll be somewhere, they preach, you don't change. They say the things you don't do, and you are still there. Why don't you find a place where you can do what they are saying? I hope you understand that. Because something must change in your life. Do you understand? You must become significant in this life. Your life must matter. How can you be around? Your life doesn't matter. Do you understand? Your life must matter. And something is a prayer topic. Yes. And it's also a teaching topic. That your life must matter. And your life becomes significant. Hello, am I on air? I don't feel, that I'm, as if I'm here alone. Hello, am I on air? I don't feel, I don't feel, can you turn it towards, I, don't, I can't feel myself as, as though I'm not using a mic. Am I using a mic? Ah, I cannot feel that I'm using a mic. Yeah. Kakra, kakra, be, hey, manager, who better why I no cry? Hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, ja, ja, leave it, leave it. Don't touch it again. Hey, I just make a crowd cry and I feel who be two speaker no cry for you. Hey, mercy, oh. Then disregarding advice. So it's one of the signs. When you say you honor someone and when he advises you, you disregard it. When you say you are following someone, when he preaches, you don't, you don't listen to it. You see? That's why you even struggle when they say that honor the prophet. You struggle because you don't listen to him. Do you see? You don't, you don't listen. It's like is, is some radio preacher somewhere be that you have not seen before. But it's changing in your life Amen. and it is changing in my life. Amen. We are getting better. I, at least I'm getting better. We are getting better every day. Is that not so? And must be on fire every day too. So, number four was leaving home um, unceremoniously. It's also a sign of this online. And prophetically, when I called Esther, apparently it was her mind to leave home and her pastor had been telling her not to go. And she was bent on going. And I was just using her as an example, but God prophetically brought her out. Hey, stand up. Uh, did you tell me that you wanted to leave your father's house? Where's your pastor to? Did, did, you, did you tell me that she had told you she wanted to leave her father's house? Have you texted me on that before? Have you texted me on that before? Have you said anything like that to me before? No, please. You see, come, come and stand here. You, you see, when you are in the service, do you see, and you... Well, pastor, come and stand. Because this is your pastor, isn't it? Come and stand here, not at the back. Here. Yes. I'm pointing here. Here. <laughs> yeah. And you are, you are thinking of what? Leaving home. Leaving home. Why? Uh, because I felt um, I wanted to be independent. You have preachy stages of independence. You have uh, still uh, you want to be independent. Hey, fiercely independent. And then what happened? Um, so you told your pastor, or you were saying it somewhere. I, I was always reminding him that I'll be leaving, and he would tell me that it's not time. I shouldn't leave. But and I, w- what was he telling you? I, I, even the week before. I the microphone. The Tuesday before last week, we were talking about it. Use the mic. You don't use mic in your church. Eh? Do I use it? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. 
Ah, man of God. Remember, no prayer you see Mike. Now, person will use Mike. Yes. So I was saying that the Tuesday before last week, after church, we're talking about it, and I was. Tuesday her, before last, last week. week yes. This last week, Tuesday is when we preached. Yes. That's when we brought her out. Yes. The week before, yes. you were talking about it. I was after church. I was with her in my car talking. Don't go. Yeah. Or go. No, no, no. I was saying that it's not time. Forget about that leaving and stay. And when and she, she was, was not saying, agreeing. No, 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 no. She has, she has to go. She Why does she want there. to go? She was saying living with her stepmother some way a lot <laughs> you she wants to leave so as i was preaching i didn't know about this i not did you tell me about no, no, it I did you text me about it no, not did you whisper it to my ears did you lift it up and say call esther esther is one of those people who are, want to dishonor their parents did you did you shout it so that i could hear we were both shocked were you shocked on that day when I called you? Yes, I was trembling. But you didn't show that you were shocked. <laughs> I was very scared. And she was trembling. <laughs> uh, you were petrified. Yes. You see, and it's not a prophetic service like the regular prophet, but it's a teaching service. But in the teaching ministry and teaching service, God can also use his word, which is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I thought you'd be clapping over. If it was something on Facebook, you'd be shouting. Yes. You, 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 you sit down. You sit down. You sit down. Yes. So what I'm saying is that it's God who reveals these type of things. And, and I thank God that I didn't know about it. So that you will not say that even if the pastor had told me, I would not have used it as an example because it would be some way. And I was feeling free. Pa. And when she came to me, she didn't tell me. The day after, too, she didn't say anything. I think three days after, before she texted me that, hey, on that Tuesday, Maybe after shock. Okay, so she was. This was her mind. You see, and and God revealed it, and counselled her. So my point is that when you are hearing the word and you've heard something like this, and they have picked you out from the congregation and used you for the example for which the teaching is coming, what are you supposed to do? So you to when you are in the service and the word is coming. And you can see that preaching, you see, when we say preaching, no, it will work. It means that you yourself can feel the pricking, the things pricking and choking you, and you are feeling something. God is here. Maybe you don't believe that God is here, but these things must show you that God is here, and God is speaking to us. And God wants to help us. See, her life has been saved, but she may not know it. Her life has been delivered. She may not know it. Her life has been extended. She may not even know it. Her life, her, a miracle has taken place in her life. She may not even know it. Because God has done it. And God will do an amazing work for you. And for you on Facebook or YouTube, God will do an amazing work in your life. Clap for Jesus. That was stage number four. Leaving home unceremoniously. A sign, number four, is a sign of dishonor. Stubbornness, again, like Pharaoh, stubbornness is a sign of dishonor. And then pretense and deception also can be signs of dishonor. Amen. So now let's look at stages. Of dishonor. The topic is stages, but at the end, I'll give you some of the uh, effects of dishonor, some of the results. When you dishonor, how does it result? So, Isaiah 53, verse 3 says, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we did hide, as it were, our faces from him. 
he was despised and we dishonored him or we esteemed him not. Yeah. So Jesus was not esteemed. He was not honored. And that is how come at the end of his life he could be put to the death of a cross to show how dishonorably they, they, they considered him. Are you listening to me? And so there are some stages. When you fall into them, it shows that you have that spirit of dishonor. I told you that it is a, a, the problem, the spiritual problem of dishonor. Maybe you know about fornication and its spiritual problems. Or you know about even loyalty and disloyalty and their spiritual problems. But you may not know that not honoring or walking in dishonor, you know, is also a spiritual problem. And there are stages. When you are going through those stages, uh, it means that you have become, you are walking along that path. Yes, the virus has afflicted you. But this is a deliverance message. God is saving your life. God is changing your life. God is turning your life around. And those of you walking on that road, God is changing you away from that path. Because the path that leads, when we read the scripture in Mark, the path of dishonor, has many unfortunate spiritual problems there. And you are not going to walk on them. Amen. You are not going to walk on them. God is saving you. Amen. So stages. Number one. Stage number one. The first stage of this honor is to be silent when you ought to speak. I mean, we know it already from our, our tradition when you are being asked a question, you are not answering. When your parents are talking to you, you are not saying anything. You say, Men no kasa no wante. You see, and yon am no kasa. You see, so it's like he's expecting a response, a respectful response. When you are quiet, it's a problem. Don't say in our culture we don't talk when the elderly people are talking. <laughs> it's not true. It is the uninformed who have made us feel that you can't talk with when you are being asked a question. Or that when you should say something. So only when you are being rebellious, then yourself comes. Then you start talking. But it is not just being rebellious that should make you talk. But respect and honor and dignity for the one who is addressing you. You must learn to respond appropriately. When, when um, Pilate, Jesus was brought before Pilate. And he asked him some questions. And he was not answering. He was not happy with it. He said, don't you know that I can release you from here? Why are you not talking? And Jesus said, you have no power. Oh, you've been given power just for a full moment. And it's not because you have power. It's just going to finish just now. <laughs> but it's like your silence was not respectful to the one who was addressing you. And said that, do you know that if you were to honor me and speak well, I could release you from this thing. But I have power. Is that not so? It's in Luke chapter 20 and verse 22. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar? No, no, not that one. I'm talking about his uh, address by Pilate in John 19 and verse number 7. He says, the Jews answered him, we have a law. But um, we have a law by our law he ought to die because he had made himself the son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid and went again into the judgment hall and said unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. 
Jesus gave him no answer. <laughs> Jesus gave him no answer. Then said Pilate unto him, eh, Speakest thou not unto me? Are you not going to open your mouth and speak? Knowest thou not that I have power, I have power to crucify thee, and I have power to release thee? Why are you quiet? You see, because the quietness to Pilate was not honorable. Because if you were to speak favorably, I would have released you quickly. But I'm talking to you and you are quiet. What kind of, don't you know who I am? You see, because based on who is talking to you, you must learn to give appropriate responses. Where are you from? You won't give the right response. Sometimes when you, you are in a meeting, when they ask a question, you are quiet. But many times, your fruitful contribution and wise responses can lift you to a higher place. Yes. Because the one, based on how powerful the person is, your good response is a good thing for you. It's, a good, it's good marks for you. Happened to Pastor Emmanuel. What happened to Pastor Emmanuel? Yes, please. Yes. Fast talking, yes. You were having a meeting in... Um, it's, it's, a a teaching, it's a teaching service. Somebody is contributing. It's not bad like and that. So you, you yes. asked a question and he got up to, to respond. I asked a question. Yes. In a meeting, and he got up and he responded to the question. And he said his voice is like a prayer voice. His voice is up. like a prayer voice. And that's yes. why he started praying for you. And then I said, well, let him speak. Let, yes. let him, if this is Pastor Emmanuel. Yes. So that what happened was that in that service, yeah. Reverend Daniel was sitting, the voice. Reverend yes. Daniel was sitting at the front. And I was, was sitting in front. Was sitting in front, and I was somewhere in the crowd. Yes. Then he turned to tell somebody to call me because I wasn't looking at his direction. And he said I should ask a question. I hadn't said anything in a meeting before. So when he said it, it was new to me. I dodged. I didn't want to say anything. Then he still insisted that I say something. And at that time, you're about to end the session. So he said, if anybody doesn't have anything to say, then I'm closing. Then I had to lift up my hands. So when I lifted up my hands and I said... My hand. My hand. Oh, you lifted up both? No, <laughs> my hand. <laughs> I lifted up my hand and you said, uh-huh, what's your name and where are you calling from? And I said, okay. my name is Simano Kwanza from Cantonment Branch. Then you asked what I do in church. And at that time, Reverend Daniel asked me to lead worship. So I told you I was a worship leader. Then you said, you have the prayer voice, pa. So from that statement, I think it was a Tuesday. So the Sunday, potential shepherds were meeting and pastors were there, reverends, shepherds already, and then you were out. So Reverend, um, at the time, Reverend Bishop Boche was going to, coming out to call you. Then he said, Emmanuel, lead the prayer. And I was looking somewhere. <laughs> then I didn't believe because... I was just a small boy at the I still am small. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Allow. Allow. So from that day. He's married now. So I mean, if he says he was God. a small boy, then you should understand. <laughs> now he's married. He has a wife. Mercy. He's leading her about. <laughs> he has a right. Mercy. So from that day onwards. You, you, you asked me to come. You know, you came to the meeting. You said, you were the one leading the prayer, eh? I said, yes, please. I said, what's your name? Imanok Kwanza. Beautiful. Then somebody came to take my name. You had a retreat here. At that time, we hadn't moved here. So you had a retreat at the white church. And you asked me to come and help with the prayer. And then that was it. So on a Tuesday, 2017, 10th October, 2017, we were in a meeting, Tuesday service, and we had closed 10 p.m., around 10 something. Beautiful. We had the shepherd's meeting. And then the pastors again, branch pastors, reverends, everybody were here. Then you asked, you started prophesying that there will be a time instrumentalist that used to play 
at GRNA, they will not be playing again if they don't take up their work serious. New people will come, new set of people will replace It has happened them. practically. Yes. And then you started prophet. I see a lady coming. What can you do? He said, I can sing. And I see a young man running to the church and enter the church. When I asked him, I asked him, what can you do? Then he said, I can pray. Then you stopped. You were around the side. Then you asked, how many of you are prayer warriors? Then about three people lifted up their hands. I said, all the branches, only four, three people are leading prayer. Then you said, where is Ivan Okwansa? And I was sitting here. Then I left it. He said, stand up. I want you to come and lead prayer in my church. Can you do it? He said, yes, Bishop. Then Reverend Daniel was sitting in front. Then you asked him, can you do it? He said, yes, Bishop. Can you release him? He said, oh, yes, Bishop. He said, you are starting this Sunday. This was in Canto Men's Branch. So Sunday, you are starting this Sunday. Yes. So those of you who... When you are there, you will not speak. When you see your bishop, you dodge. But why will burn the doors? Into the who's here. So that they don't fish you out. So. <laughs> Clap for Jesus. Yeah. So, you won't speak. You won't say, even your speaking can get you a beloved. Yeah. Yes. You're speaking. Because you speak. Do you understand? Even now, based on that, how he leads prayer, if he's going to propose to anybody, do you think he can be bounced? He can't easily be bounced like that. He was not bounced at all. He rather has to find out which one he must choose because he's poor for choice. And you are just here, you won't say anything. When you go out now, saying all the wrong things in the wrong places. So, learn and believe. Speaking. Eh? Speaking is very good and it's a very important sign and a very important stage to find yourself in speaking. 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 Yeah. Today, prophet was leading us in prayer. He quoted the scripture that speaking the truth in love may grow up openness speaking the truth openness speaking so learn to speak when there's a group you have a group of people somebody has taught you something it is honorable to the one who has taught you for you to get up spontaneously without even being told that give a vote of thanks and then you say i want to say thank you you see at the speaking it honors the one who, has, who is standing there teaching you. So when he hears the thanksgiving from you, it blesses his heart and can easily lead to your exaltation. A lot of ladies, you won't say anything oh, when they even greet you as though you don't have a voice. But those who are able to speak, how are you? Oh, by the grace of God. You have gone ahead and out, but... It's like your Ghana brofono has turned into a, an Americanized English. Do you see? Because people use those things to, to, to gain points. The only time we hear you speaking is when you are rebelling. That's why I'm saying that a lot of us don't speak. But when you are rebelling, we can hear your voice. A lot of pastors you see on Facebook who have rebelled against their fathers. You, not knowing that they know how to do Facebook. Not knowing that they know how to talk and introduce themselves. When they were with their father, as though they can't speak. But when they are rebelling, then you hear their voices. There are pastors whose voices you never heard. But once they start rebelling, you see that you are now hearing their voices. So I'm teaching you today that don't only speak when you are choboy, choboy, yay, choboy, oh, child, we no go sit down with the cheaters. Nonsense, Skype. We are not fools. We are not fools. That's when you are speaking. But learn to also speak. I'm blessed. I thank God for what I'm experiencing. Oh, I'm so blessed. I was just going, but I couldn't go because of the way I felt in the service. I was so blessed and I just wanted, I needed you to hear from me that you really blessed me. Yeah, can own yet. We are saying you won't do it. Oh. You look at my face. 
In whom they are my culture, they did, they did, they did, they, did, they have not taught us. <laughs> they have not taught us. But you are changing from tonight. And a beautiful life is going to flow from your life. Beautiful. Make the mistake. You see, say, oh, me, I don't want to. My, my English, you see, my English was never good. So I don't like talking and people will see my mistakes. Oh, that's your problem. I have Teresa here. She hasn't been to school. I think up to class what? Up to class what? Don't come. Just shout. Eh? Class three. He and Archbishop Duncan Williams are classmates. Because Archbishop Duncan Williams also went up to class three. Yes. Up to class three. You see. And I don't know what it is, but if you were to hear her speaking English, you would think she went to maybe a Chimota or Wesley girls. And if she makes a mistake, she's able to reverse and correct it. Which most, even graduates cannot do. Because you are not used to talking in public. So the small one that you get, you know, you haven't trained yourself to speak. It was a brofunen in Nam. The English is walking in town. Hey. It's like a limousine. It's walking on the street, going up and down. And they didn't come. And, and she's there. She's there. And then the, the way you speak your chi eh, is the way you speak your English. She's there. Just a like, oh, It's She's there. <laughs> Bishop Asso. He's there. <laughs> Bishop, eh, Bishop, he's in his he's in his office. <laughs> he's there. He's in his office. It's like you, you use your body to, to, to make the question mark in the question. <laughs> She's there. It's like when you move, then the question mark has come. She's there because she is there. That's the statement. But to make it a question, you have to use your body to draw the question mark after the sentence. She's there. That's just a question mark. Now, but not door. Come out of that stage. Tell yourself, I have to speak. Me a mistake to cry, it doesn't matter. This afternoon, this evening, I was correcting somebody and he was trying to respond in a certain way. I said, look, if you don't want me to correct you, just say it. Well, I, mean, I correct people all the time. But if I correct you, I, as if I didn't hear well. And so you are telling me that I didn't hear well. So I should bring recordings and people who were there to point out that that's what you said, but Bishop heard well. I mean, if you don't want to be corrected, just say it because... We, we can also be there and listen to all your bullets and leave you with it. So I want to make sure. Because me, I'm not a, a, an English teacher, an English teacher. But if you make a small mistake in the English, we can, we can at least just point it at that. Oh, I'm very, very blessed. No, I'm very, very blessed. It's not correct. Oh. If that one, dear, I can correct it. I'm very, very, very blessed. So, I, the D was there, but you didn't hear. And then now, when they are texting to you, see that the DED doesn't come. So it shows that it's not that we, don't, we didn't say it well, but that we, that's how we say it. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm very, very blessed. And we are saying that, no, it has an ED at the end. So I'm very, very blessed. Still, no, some of you are texting it. Still. So you are just like people who are in a class when they teach you to get it wrong still. They have corrected you. When you are correcting the correction to you, make it wrong. Now you just put only D there at the end. Because he said, I'm very blessed. It ends with a D. So B L E S S D. Then say, Can you not pronounce it? 
I then actually be required to do so. Bishop, your text not be correct to say so. Me, I don't like texting. That's why most of you are silent on the platform. <laughs> because the spelling were not good at the time. And you don't want to make a mistake. You say, hey. Your spelling is not good at all, in spite of your math. Math. Every day, talking and argumentative and always wanting to face somebody. Son, and when you are spelling, it doesn't work. But I have people, their schooling was not too much. They try to spell. And they are happy when I make... Sometimes the text is very long, the correction no door, so I just leave it. But every now and then, I, I try. Because I, I can't correct every... It's not nice. At least I understand what you are saying. And they keep texting. The, the other day I saw this brother, he always texts me. When I read, I said, oh, the English has advanced. Yes, and the big, big words that were coming through were all correct. You, see. you dear, you are a silent reader. Even when we are preaching, you don't say amen. You are just like Leah. Have you taken out my base? Okay. You are just like Leah. When Jacob married her, she wouldn't speak. Not knowing that she was not a correct person. Because she had come instead of her sister. To come and sleep with the man who has wedded her sister with the father's arrangement and connection. So she didn't want to say anything. So, first wedding night, pa, first night on your wedding night, no talking, no comments, no question, no contribution, no, no noise. Hey! Whether in pain or in joy. Hey! And a virgin like Leah. Hey! Are you trying to tell me that that is how it is? You see. But you must learn to speak. Speaking is good. In Job, Job, I think Job 32, verse 18. Job 32, 18. Where's the guy? He says, for I am full of matter. The spirit within me constraineth me. Behold, my belly is as wine which, is, which hath no vent. It is ready to burst like new bottles. But I will speak that I may be refreshed. I will open my mouth, my lips and answer. What you don't know is that speaking is therapeutic. Dictionary. <laughs> speaking is therapeutic. It brings refreshing. Say, I will speak that I may be refreshed. Every day bottled up things inside is not the way to go. Yes. God is healing somebody here today. God is healing you. At your workplace, it will affect you. Your speaking will help to break you out of the riffraffs and the people who just like a looter. They don't talk, but when the looter comes, then you hear their voices. Choboy, ye, choboy, ye, choboy, ye. But don't only wait. Only don't, don't, don't just rebel in your voice. Speak with honor and dignity. And let the one who is your boss or your father or your pastor or your bishop, let him feel your love through your speaking. Don't be quiet and silent. Hey, it's a short service. Number two. The second stage of this honor is not believing in someone. You don't believe in someone. You don't believe in someone. In John 7. These are just Bible study notes. We are just sharing them. If you are on this thing, it's not deliverance or prayer. It's just teaching very good. God left, Jesus left the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
to teach us. He says, you have the unction and you need not that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing abideth in you and he shall, he, he, and, and his truth and his no lie. The Bible says that he shall teach you all things. The anointing is teaching. It's instructing, it's guiding. Don't turn your ear to t- away from teaching. After these things, John 7, verse 1. Uh, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry or within the Jewish territory. So he was in Galilee. Because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feasts of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that thy disciples may, may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. The Bible says that for neither did his brethren believe in him. They don't believe. But they are telling you, oh, why don't you do a miracle service where people can see you? They don't really believe. In John 1, 12, Jesus says, Jesus, well, John the Baptist, John was writing and he said, um, he came unto his own, his own received him not. You see, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. You see, receiving somebody is like you have accepted the person, welcomed the person, and then whatever the person has to, you have received it. So that, those are the people that he called the sons of God. Then he gave a different category of people who are not there to see you, to receive you. But he says, but even to them that believed on his name. So it means that believing puts you in the same category as somebody who was there and you were talking. Do you understand the message? So as many, uh, in John 1, 11, he says, he came unto his own and his own received him not. Verse 12 says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power. Like he came, like Jesus has come to the hometown, they, oh, is this not the carpenter's son? That's how John summarizes that his own received him not. You see, that's why there was no power to do miracles or do anything. But as many as received him to those villages where they welcomed him and they lined the sick in the street in um, uh, Mark chapter 6, the Bible says that the, he, as many as touched him were made whole. Beautiful. So it's like those who received him, his own people didn't receive him like that. He came, but he they didn't welcome him. He came, but they said he was the carpenter. He came, they said it was Mary's son. He came, they said it was Joseph's brother, and then these uh, sisters are also here. We know the sisters. Who is this guy? So, oh, where is he from? How can he be the Messiah? Now, oh, don't mind the guy. Don't mind the guy. They, re- they did not receive him. But from there, he went to the villages and the towns, and they received him. And miracles occurred. He multiplied bread for them. He healed the sick. Everybody who was sick, just not without him touching, but if they touched the hem of his garment, they were made whole. Power. So he says, but as many as received him, like when he came and they saw him and they welcomed him, they experienced the power of God. They were called the sons of God. Then he says, even... To those who believe in his name. Verse 12. Is that not so? John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. So it means that those of us who now hear about him and hear about his name and now we also believe, no, we also have, it's like we have received him. So we also qualify for power. For power. That's why his name is working today. Because we have now believed on his name and we have, we are not there. 
You and I were not there. When he walked on Galilee, we were not in Galilee. When he walked the streets of Nazareth, we were not in Nazareth. When he walked in Bethesda and walked in Capernaum and walked in Cana, we were not there. But today we have heard of his name and we believe on that name. And by that believing, oh, we have honored him. He says, once you have honored me and you have believed on me, you too, you can become a son of the living God. That's why we are children of we are the sons of God. Oh, we are the sons of God. We have washed our robes in the blood of Jesus. We are the sons of God. As many as believed on his name, they too were called the sons of God. They don't have to have been there. I don't have to have gone to Jerusalem. I'm very comfortable with Christianity. I don't have to have been in Nazareth. I don't have to have seen Jesus at Bethesda. <laughs> when he, he went to the pool of Bethesda, in, in which were a lot of impotent folk, and who were waiting for the troubling of the water so that they can all be healed. I don't, have, I, I don't have to have gone there. I don't have to have been there to have been an eyewitness of his majesty as John and Peter and James and Bartholomew and Philip and, and, and Alphaeus and Judas. Not the one who betrayed. Not Iscariot. And even Judas Iscariot. I don't have to be somebody who was also one of the disciples when he multiplied bread. All I need is to hear about the name and hear about who he was. That there was once a man of Galilee. Hey, his name was Jesus. Hey, I love that man of Galilee. So I don't know. I don't, I've not seen him before. One day I'm hoping. That's my hope. And I look for it for, with, to that hope that one day my eye will see him. He whose side was pierced. He whose hands were nailed. My eyes will see him and, and I'll ask him, Lord, show me your hands. Are the scars still there? Are the marks still there? What about your side? Can I put my finger in there to see how they pierced your side? One day I'd like to see it. But even if I don't see, it doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter. It's enough to, for me that I know his name and believe on his name. By his own brothers, they didn't believe in him. So when you have somebody you claim to honor and you don't really believe in the person, you, 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 are, not, you are not honoring. Yeah. yeah. The brothers walked with him, uh, but he didn't believe. I think eventually one of his brothers, Jude, became foster and came out. Because sometimes every family, there's one person who always goes away from the general, general thinking. Yeah. So if you're in a family where they don't really believe in church, really being active, you are wasting your time, you are going to church too much, you have to know how to escape and, and, and isolate yourself and follow what your heart believes. But believing is honorable. And the one who honors God, he says, I will honor him. Look at me, I'm honored. I've been honored. I've been honored by God. I've been elevated by God. God has exalted me to some extent, to some degree. Even among my family, my, my sisters, my brother, they all honor me and they, 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 they revere me. They, they respect me highly. God is the one who did it. It's not me. It is the Lord. Because I've also honored him by believing in him and following him ardently and passionately and strongly up till today. You are joking with your whole Christianity and you are not serious. You are just there. As if said, Jesus, no, you haven't really found him and received him. When I found him and I received him, you see, I didn't receive him that I've seen him physically. There are some people who have had revelations of Jesus. He's beautiful. I have never seen him. 
Remember, sin, it doesn't matter. One of my favorite scriptures, 1 Peter 1 8. He says, Whom having not seen, you love. And although ye see him not, yet believing. Because I don't have to see him, but I can believe. You rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You don't have, you don't have such expressiveness for the one whom you haven't seen, but you claim to believe. Whom you haven't seen, but you claim to love. You don't have such exuberance. You are not excited. They have to say, hey, jump, hey, jump, hey, show me your kotoje. And you are not happy about that because you don't want to hop on one leg. And the man, he likes hopping on one leg. And he thinks everybody has the strength to be hopping on one leg. But I have to show my kotoje because they are forcing us to show our kotoje. That's not how we follow the Lord. Whom have we not seen? Oh, yes. I'm trying in my life. By the time this little life is over, oh, in my heart, he himself will know that I loved him while I was here. Yeah. I don't have to impress you or do anything to impress you. I'm trying to preach a series on if you love the Lord from Sunday, but I'm not sure whether, I mean, I don't know. I'm just asking him whether I should continue. I've listed a few songs. I want to go with the message. I've listened to a message on loving God. Ah, eh, it has entered my heart and I am bursting in my heart. I don't have to do anything to impress you. There was a time I liked to me for but my host idea no. If you are forcing, now so be pa. Kinsley Jai. Whom have you not seen? You love. And though you have, you see him not. Jesus, if you don't show yourself physically, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It's just my, I believe. It's difficult to believe something you haven't seen. But Lord, I've tried and I'm trying. Just help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. I don't have to see him before I run. I don't have to see him before I do things to please him. He says, even though I have not seen him, yet, 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 believing, believing. When you have somebody you can see, you can't even believe the person. And that's why many times, a certain power is not released into our lives through somebody you claim to honor. Jesus said, these people, they honor me with their lips, but their heart. DNA, I had to have connectivity for us in water, face answers to face in the water. So the heart of man to man. It's like the heart of a man connects to a man and responds to the heart. We the people said, Look, he said, I've written, I don't know how many I've written now books. I don't know what, how many books I've written now. I don't know. He said, You can read all the books and know all my principles, but you have not found my secret. So you know my heart for God. He said, my heart for God is that if God doesn't answer another prayer or anything at all, that he doesn't have to do anything. He said, I love him for who he is and not what he can give. He said, those who love him for the things that he gives will soon lose their passion for him. Because I'll, I'll, maybe your pastor will shout at you. That's why you are here this evening. Ah. Let the clouds just change and become a little rainy. Some showers come down. That will be it. But there are people who love him even though they haven't seen him. And they say they go to church and then he says where two or three are gathered in his name. There he is in the midst of them. So you see them. It's raining no. And there's a flood. Before they cross the flood to pick a car, 
And they said, no way. Once I'm not drowning, I'm walking through. You see them carrying their slippers and carrying their bag and, and lifting their kaba and wading through the water to go to a place where two or three people have gathered in the name of Jesus in under, under, under a little canopy. That's how, they, that's how it is for the people. And though he slay me. Oh. Oh. Lord, if you, love, if you are there, why are you slaying me? But there are people who love him to the extent that even if it is God slaying me, hey, yet will I trust in him. You claim to love somebody, you, 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 you honor someone. If he says something, maybe rebuke you or even don't rebuke or he speaks against you in public. Like when he was talking to you, like, he, he felt so free with you that there were people around he didn't even mind because Bishop, oh, oh, why you do? Oh, Bishop, why can't send my name yapa? You see, the person can speak, so I can't send Emanaya with ya. It's like your bishop or your pastor has spoken and it has hurt you. Your father can speak and it will hurt you because it's like there were other people there. See, that shows you that your pride is very high. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, it's a short service. Neither did his brethren believe on him. When you do not believe that someone, what someone says, it is a sign that you do not respect the person. A lack of faith is a lack of trust. In other words, you are saying you are not trustworthy. Your words are not worth, worth much. Yeah. Doesn't matter if somebody is your brother. You, you, you can be listening to you or he's following you, but he doesn't really believe you. I pray that you not be that type of person. Who is in my church? You don't really believe in me or in the prophet who has sent me here. Your life is changing properly from today. Amen. Third stage of this honor is to reject someone. Now you, you don't believe them. You reject someone. Luke 9, 51. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should, that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And sent messengers before his face. And they went. And entered into a village of the Samaritans. To make ready for him. And they did not receive him. Because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. Mm. In Mark chapter 5 verse 14 it says. And they, that, and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city. And in the country. This was the madman of Gadara. And they went out to see what, what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind that they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. Because Jesus cast the devils into the swine and they drowned in the sea. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. You see, a very nice miracle like this that has brought deliverance to a human being. And when the swine or the pork, which I think even Jews don't eat, do you see? Eh? You say he should get out of your country. It's a rejection. Try not to reject anointed people. What? The, look. When I listen to my prophet, I see that he seemed to have learned and imbibed and received impartation from several men of God. He is an embodiment of several anointings. You hear him of his connection with Papa Hagen, with uh, Fred Price. Listen to them, follow them for years. You see him, you hear him talking about his, his connection and impartation with Bonke for the crusades and Benny Hinn for the miracles. 
and young Cho for church growth. That he's gone there even now as we speak. The man has died. He's gone still. <laughs> yes. Yeah, to honor him is even in the book. When you, are, you honor the person when he cannot see. In his absence. He's gone there to honor him and be there for his burial or whatever function is going on. And he's gone through Malaysia to honor Pastor Datuk, Prince Gunaratnam, who was like an Asian father, introduced him to Yongicho and encouraged Yongicho, always mentioning him that this man is good. He can host even church growth conference in Accra. This man is good. There's no problem. Don't think about security. He knows how to do all these things. He will take care of it. He always introduced him. He's like his Asian father. Until the man died, he had an unbroken Beautiful flow with him. He's gone to see his widow to pay respect and honor him in his absence. He will talk about Rejoiner, a prophet of the Lord whom he has never met, but he believes him so much through his teachings and writings. Look, you can't say only this man of God is my man of God. You don't even follow him well. And you have to respect any anointed vessel that God is using anywhere on the globe. Something can come from there to you. When I hear Edipo say, Oh, God bless Oswald J. Smith. From him came this impartation of the love. He said, I was reading his book on the man God uses. And a great impartation of <laughs> Matthew 6.33 came upon me. He says, and, and it was, it's not in the book. It, it's not in the book. But by the time I finished my, 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 my interaction with him in the book, you know, the thing that is not in the book came upon me. And I, it says, and I made a covenant with the Lord. I wrote down a covenant that I will serve God with my life. And I was not planning to preach. I was not a preacher and I was not planning to preach. But I will serve God till I die. He says, I was not a preacher. I was not intending to preach. To the extent where I told the beloved, my beloved at the time, he said, he told her that, can you marry me because this is what I want to do. And he said, if she had said no, I don't think I would have married I don't think I would have married. God, how my heart was flowing and what was f- happening to me, marriage was not in my mind. From Oswald J. Smith. His impartation from Kenneth Hagen. He has never stopped. Say, there are things that happen in your life and they keep speaking. The impartation from several anointed vessels. You don't know how to connect to anointed verses. So, oh, sorry, Anna. Oh, can we hold them? Oh, this man is not a good person. He's not a false, he's a false prophet. He's a false. You, he's a false prophet. You have the authority to judge. Quieter, no crowd, and yet none of pain. And you are the one who is going to judge you have not a, a man. Retreat. You haven't done retreat the whole year. Only you go to gardens to go and pray. You be that. And you are now identifying false prophets. You are not afraid. You are struggling in your Christianity. And you are now one of the judges of these prophets who are ministering in the name of the Lord. You are not afraid. Somebody says that I've seen three eggs and this is what it means. You say, oh, how can it be possible? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't reject servants of God that are sent into your life. You'll be surprised what is in each of them for your life. We the people will never stop ab- talking about Kenneth Copeland. How he was on a search and how poverty died through the books of Gloria Copeland and Kenneth Copeland. How poverty died in his life. 
and has never joked with his relationship with Kenneth Copeland up to the, today. Then he said, a few months ago, I was back, I was in his place. Fell, had a, just to fellowship with him and just to be with him. And while I was there, he called me. He said, come, come, come. He put a mantle on me. Put a mantle. He said that year he was going to have a Shiloh and the theme was a double portion before the theme. He said, the man didn't know about the theme, but he prayed, receive double. <laughs> receive double. Receive double. When you are there always, when you see a man of God, his English is worrying you. Oh, you can't, can't, he's so American, he can't hear the slangs well, so you are bored with him. Hey, you don't enjoy him, and then because you can't hear the English, then you are angry with them that, oh, I don't even know what they are talking about. Hey. If he's a tree preacher, you don't understand tree, leave him. Leave him to God. Don't fight people who are doing things because you know you don't understand them then you are facing them. Don't reject. You see, Jesus gave a parable. He said the Lord sent his servants. One servant, they rejected him. Another servant, they beat him up. Another servant, they killed him. He sent his only son, they killed him. You see, always rejecting people. And, and the people who are listening to him, the Bible says they, they saw that he has spoken the parable against them. They were not happy at all. (laughs) They were looking for him to kill him for preaching against them. If somebody is preaching and the preaching always pricks you and you are uncomfortable, you don't have to hate him. Because the preaching is pricking you. You want those who Look at over your head and speak. God is making you big. God is making you great. God is lifting you up. When God is against you and somebody says God is lifting you up, it's, it's not a good thing for you. Don't reject. Tell somebody, don't reject God's servants that are sent into your life. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Even Jesus, they asked him, leave, 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 leave our country. Leave. Leave. One man, one brother, he, a pastor, he left, he was, he hadn't even left the church. He was leaving the church or he left the church. He told the wife, never, I don't want to hear that man's voice in my house again. He was talking about Bishop Dykeward. I don't want to hear this man's voice in my house again. And some of us, our spouses, have rejected the voices that you listen to. Do throw crown to me more message. Because sometimes when you are preaching, the, you are playing the message, you know, it, 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 it will, will war him. Then he will be angry with you the more. Meanwhile, you didn't intentionally open it. It was just going through. Careful of rejection. Some of you lay pastors, you are averse to full-time ministry. So if there's a camp and there's a book and there's a message on full-time, now when you know when him, so uh, <laughs> preaching no. When you come on the flow prayers and the prayer topics are along those lines, then you have changed the prayer topic to Ezek. You are breaking altars. You are taking them down. The Lord is helping you. The Lord is on your side. Now we're near you. You carry your evidence. What God cannot do does not exist. Then you are happy. You come here. Confess your sins of rejecting the call of God. This topic. This topic. Bishop. The Ben or Bessie Sasa topic careful because the Bible says that though the Lord gives you the bread of affliction and the water of adversity you should never remove your teachers to a corner yes bread of adversity and waters of affliction 
Don't remove your teachers to a corner. Just hang on and patiently wait on God. He will come and save you. Clap for Jesus. Good. The fourth stage, stage four of this honor is to prevent others from honoring someone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You don't honor nobody you honor. When in the house of Simon, the leper, the sinner woman came. Hmm? The Bible says that she came and she having an alabaster box of ointment, of spikenard, very precious, break the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation. Had indignation means they were angry. There were some people standing around. When they saw the woman come and she poured, she, she, she had an alabaster box. And the Bible says, of very precious, like a very nice expensive perfume. There are perfumes, they don't sell them on the shelf. And if it's in the shelf, you will not gain access to it. It's locked. You have to point that this one, I want one. Or ha, ha, ha. then they will open and, and then spray for you. One will be maybe $700 or $1,200. Yes. Those are uh, what? Not eau de parfum, but extract, extracts, extracts. Oh, you so tunali, ain't you name? All these things. <laughs> Your perfume is only 20 Ghana cities. Ain't you? Who spray on your tad ye muni na na say white dress no? Spot pa 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 na. I I call them white has changed to yellow. Malaysia. And when you pass, it's like is it sweat or perfume that we are smelling? Well, it's not the scent is not clear. <laughs> There is eau de toilette. The, the concentration of the perfume is not a lot in it. There's eau de parfum. They are different. You don't know. When you say there, eau de toilette, eau de parfum, I was trying to perfume man back. I was trying to perfume spray. Oh, man spray. I want some of the spray. The fush, fush, fush that you put on your body. The fush, fush, fush you put on your body. The fush, fush, fush that you put on your body. There's also body splash. Yes, that one is even lighter. For the women, yeah. It's like you have perfumed yourself with aloes and mer. Now we do bed. Now why you why you succulent? So they are not powerful. You haven't bathed since you left home and went to work, and you are so sleepy that you have come to lie in the bed with your sweat and toil. You say, oh, the way you are feeling sleepy, you, know, you want to sleep more to remove the sleep from your eyes. You have, you have, your body scent has caught the whole bed. The mattress, everything. See, even when you remove your, your bed sheet, it's in the, in, the, in the blanket. When you remove the blanket, it's in the bed. The scent you know, has filled the room with some stench. Dry sweat mixed with saliva. Somebody is blessed. Amen. Somebody is blessed. Amen. The first stage of this honor is to prevent others. When they saw the woman, you see, they were angry. They had indignation. Yeah, bored. Ah, what is all this waste? Why was this waste of ointment? They didn't say it loud, but it was in them. But Jesus, he had prophetic eyes. He said, no. You people are angry with her. He said, for we must have sold this thing for 300 pence and have given it to the poor. And they remembered against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why troubleth ye the woman? She hath wrought a good work. She hath wrought a good work. Let her alone. Don't prevent her from honoring me. 
there are people who don't like the way we love our prophet. And there are some of you, you don't like the way some people love me. Go and burn the seat. As for you, dear, if somebody loves you, you'll be happy that everybody will love you. But you don't want somebody say, every day, bishop said, bishop said, bishop said. You see, when you are with somebody and you point to the person that if bishop was the one sending you, wouldn't you go? You see, don't tell somebody or ask somebody that I'm calling you, I'm not coming. If bishop was calling you, that's how you respond. That's dishonor. Because you are not bishop. You are not bishop. And I, I, yeah, yeah. So when I, when, when, when I'm coming, you don't stand. If bishop is coming, don't you stand. Are you bishop? Are you bishop? Do you preach as powerfully as I preach? Even if I say so myself. <laughs> Do you love the people the way I love them? When you see the people, you say, Bishop will not treat them like that. You will say, Swine, Kwasia, foolish, uh, stupid, Krasini boy. If even Bishop says it, you see that it's very nice. The person will be laughing. Oh, the okay, yeah, Hey! You've never said, uh, good to see you, good to see you. But Bishop, with your back, now I have good to see you. Good to, are you Bishop? Are you Bishop? Never say, you see, if you want somebody's respect that, you give it to this person. Or the thing that you give, why don't you give it to me too? And there are some husbands who say that, is that how you, you serve Bishop? And you are not Bishop. So, uh, you, you are not even a pastor. So then you are called, you are telling your wife, you are using me to chide your wife that hey, dear now, oh, 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 if bishop, if, if it was bishop, is that how you serve him? Common basenta leader. You have not even passed post. You are rebuking your members with me that eh. Hey, you people, when I walk into the service, you don't stand up. But is that how you treat Bishop when he comes into the service? <laughs> don't, don't say such things. Eh, if Rev was here, is that how you, you, you all be whatever? You see, that's not how they exert authority. Don't compare yourself with a higher authority and use it to slap, to slap it on your members that if it was bishop who was this, is that how you will? So you are trying to say that I am bishop and as I have come, you are not doing what you do to bishop. Hmm? All of you just scatter. Yeah? Meanwhile, if it was bishop, you all be here. You see? We, we, we don't, we don't, we don't <laughs> call for respect and honor that way. In doing so, no, you are dishonoring the person that they honor. And you are trying to prevent them from honoring him. If you are in the house with your father... And, and, and your brothers and whatever and then you, you tell your sister who cooks for everybody in daddy and serves daddy specially or how who serves daddy specially you don't say that ah, is that how you serve daddy yes and some people have the audacity yes you give him three chicken give him the same and number and I'm the da da and call this hey 
<laughs> da. If it was da, is that is that the is that the meat you give da? Meanwhile, you have not given chop money, money huh? before. And you want the honor that is given the father of the house. You are trying to confuse those who are honoring the, the, the pastor or the father. You are confusing them. Because you are nobody and you are nothing. And if there is a higher person who is being honored, don't put yourself in that, that position and uh, call for their honor and their respect. We are honoring Jesus. Honor him. Sour him with the best perfume that costs more than 300 pence or 1,000 pence or whatever the amount. Let that honor go to him. Yes. And leave the poor. Jesus said, the poor you have always with you. And whensoever you will, you will do them good. But me, you don't have me always. When my mother was alive, by God's grace, God help me and forgive me, but I tried. Every month, I give her an amount. She doesn't make food for me. She doesn't make shit tough for me. She doesn't, even when I go there, I don't eat. I don't want to bother her. The old lady, it is something. Make food, I'm coming to visit you. Are they? What? She has cooked enough in my lifetime. It is enough. Just to fellowship with her and everything. Talk to her. Listen to her. She can tell me every story from secondary school. People she knew two years ahead of her, one year behind her, three years behind her, who had married who, their child, who my Hey, more than computer. <laughs> and you may say that, oh, only do call to to answer. No. I love to listen to her. Well, there's nobody to whom she can talk and nobody to tell those stories to. But I was very happy to just relax and be with her and spend time every Monday as much as I could. I was there Monday after Monday. Today I'm, I'm surprised that all my children come to me on Mondays and sleep over and go to work from the house with their spouses and twins and grandchildren on Monday, it's today that I'm preaching that it has occurred to me that I also get visits from my children. Hey, I saw. I feel me who every Monday my son will come Sunday night and then stay till Tuesday night a uh, Monday night. Over, we spent even Monday evening together. I didn't realize that that's what I was doing. For. As I'm saying it now, that it has occurred to me that I used to do it for my mother. Every Monday, I'm called. There's nothing we have in common in terms of our current interest and work that we do or anything. But just to tell me her old stories. Mitiesa, bless her with offering. If I travel and come, she's the first to be called. If I'm going, the, one of the last to be called. Everything. Good relationship. When she died, I had no pressure to do anything. People are now saying, oh, this is the time. You have to show people. You have to show people. Mom will make the food for them. I said, nobody's eating food. Water is the best I will give. Water. My sisters, my wife, they came. Oh, it's not fair. There will be people who are traveling and come and say, Monsieur. No, no, Monsieur. Is that all we give visitors? Give them water. And then everybody goes. I don't have to impress anybody. The person I had to impress, she is gone. She cannot see, she cannot hear. I will do what is decent to see her off. I'm not going to be extravagant and show, show, show for people. If there are family members, I feel we have lunch in the house. That's all, family members. Anybody else. And my sister also died. When she died, I, t- I told my uncle, go and announce that. Ojo package a kufie. Yes, and he did it very well. Later, some family members will say, ah, but why do you suck the people like that? I say, ah, 
What they said I should say is what I went to say. <laughs> I had no, nothing to impress anyone. Because once she was alive, oh, any honor and dignity that was deserving a sibling, I did for her. Relating, giving, relating, seeing, visiting, helping, whatever the area, we did it. Please take one million. Eh? Oh, Kai, I've done everything already. And that's what Jesus said that she has honored me. She's finished. She's honored me. She has done what she could. Whatever has to be done for me, she has done it. Don't let anybody prevent you from honoring whomsoever you need to honor. There are people who are in the realm of dishonor. They are very comfortable there. So they don't see why anybody, and when they have to honor anybody, it's like the, 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 the minimalist. Minimalist offerings is what they present. So they don't know how to honor someone like they honored Mordecai with the status of a royalty to give him the king's robe and the king's scepter and the ring that the king wears and the crown that he wears, the royal crown that he wears. They should put it, it's like he is not going to be the king, but for once, through the principal cities of this city, let us, principal streets, let us put the king's crown on him, the king, no... He wanted to honor this man, but he doesn't know what to do. So here is the king. So today he's the king. One day king, Mordecai. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, please. Number five. Number five, the fifth stage is to accuse someone. Yeah. When, and to quarrel and to be in conflict with someone. You are supposed to honor, but you are in conflict, you are accusing, and then you are, uh, uh, you are quarreling with the person. Whether it's a mother, whether it's a father, whether it's a pastor, whether it's a center leader, or whether it's a center director. Somebody you should honor. Always quarreling. There's always an issue. Or forever, we don't want to pick the call. Sometimes your mom picking a call is a sign of quarreling, conflict, and accusations. Instead of honor. They sent you text. You have seen it. You reply. It's like the issue is so hot that you don't want to Read it even again. <laughs> and then the last stage is the stage, the stage, sixth stage of this honor. The last one is to physically attack a person. Or verbally abuse a person in an open way. Mm. That's how they killed Jesus. Crucified him, put him on a cross. Don't just kill him and cut off his head. Don't just cut off his head. Put him on a cross. Strip him naked. Shame on him. You should preach the preachings that he's preaching still and let's see. He should come down and save himself and all of us. There are some of you, I pray for you that you never get to that point where Somebody you honor, you'll be standing somewhere and physically, openly insulting, verbally abusing on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, on television, talking, J, 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 J. don't mind him, foolish man, he will see what is coming for him. All these people, God will kill them one by one. <laughs> yeah. All that, like one brother... He, somebody, to, I don't know, somebody told him something his father, his, his pastor has said that concerned him. So he took off from his house. I know him personally. 
If he's listening to me now, he'll be smiling. Because he has changed. And he's still in the church. He got out of his car, his house, and sat in his car. I'm going to beat this man. He will learn something. He will learn never to speak about me in that way. So he took him. Changed, those days it was uh, manual. He changed, uh, put it in first. Jump, 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 vroom, 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 vroom. Step on the clutch and then started the car. Change, step on the clutch and change. And then uh, and first one, vroom, change to second, vroom, third, vroom, fourth, vroom, fifth. Till he got to his pastor's house and got down from the car. Oof, I don't think he even turned off the engine. Oof, oof, oof. No, bye, 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 bye. Bye, 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 bye. Ah, the people are wondering who is looking for the pastor when they went at was uh, 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 Pastor so and so there. Is he there? Is he there? Pastor so and so said, He's not there. He's not where? He's not there. You checked the car was not there. He's lucky. He's lucky. He's lucky. Then he went to sit in his car and he went back home. She said, his pastor was fortunate that he was not in the house. I said, I'm coming to beat him. Yes, that's the, one of the highest levels of dishonor. You can accord your pastor to physically assault him. Because he has said something you didn't like. Or you sit in your room and imagine how if you get him, you will slap him. <laughs> one bishop, one bishop of Archbishop Benson Dahusa, he said, I don't know whether to other bishops or some people that, that man, he deserves to be slapped. Oh, yes. An anointed person. So, if you may not get a chance to physically assault, but it's in your plans, and it's in your thoughts, and it's in your speech. Yes. So, I pass around here, I'm born as a woman, i you say, there are people who say those things. Na <laughs> If if you if you like it, le pompo iwo ihiwa. Le pompo iwo ihiwa. You sure that they were a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a for two months, name Fiku. Yes. Let's see what I mean. We are that dear. Yes. Yes, my guy here, Babana. Dan in your bishop say, Whoa, if you need King Kong Gile, King Kong Gile. You see, this type of talking about your pastor, a pastor, a man of God, a servant, like a holy person. When David was running away from Saul, he got to a place called Nob. And there were priests there, 85 of them. They harbored him. They gave him victuals. They gave him Goliath's sword. And they sent him away. And somebody, some spy B was there. He went to tell Doeg the Edomite. He went to tell Saul that, Ah, David has gone to Nob. And the people, the priests there, they have harbored him. They've given him provisions. And now he has left. So Saul came to the place and said, Ah, 
My enemy came here, you didn't tell me, and you have given him provisions and let him go. You people, have, so he ordered his soldiers to slay the, the, the priests. They were wearing their cassock, everything, and, and they were holding swords. The, the soldiers of Saul said, we don't kill. We kill Amalekites, Philistines, Hittites, Hivites, Mammonites, Moabites, Perizzites, Gegashites, but priests that, they are a priest who has a collar. We don't touch such people. We don't, we don't touch such people. Well trained soldiers who can kill with just one blow, they say we don't kill. Abner, Abner, a very mighty man, Abner. He said, we don't kill. He refused to kill. Then this Doeg the Edomite. Doeg, there are a lot of Doeg the Edomites around the system. He told him, kill them. Then he, this boy slew, he actually slew the priests. He killed them. He killed them. 85 of them. Are you a Doeg? Are you a type of person who kills priests? Are you a type of person by, by the time you are finished, instead of a great anointing that is walking on earth, the person is some silent, silent, somebody who has been silenced and somebody who is like a vulture that has been beaten by the rain. Pastors must be honored. Fathers must be honored. Husbands must be honored. Any authority figure God has set over you whose honor must be given, you must give it. Don't join Doeg. Don't join the people that go around slaying the priest and fighting the people of God. May God deliver you from such a judgment and save you that throughout your life you walk on the path of honor to give honor to God. Give honor to Jesus. Give honor to the Holy Spirit. Give honor to priests, pastors. Give honor to prophets. Give honor to husbands. Give honor to people who have been sent into your life to be a blessing to you. Give honor to whom honor is due. Yes. And custom to whom custom is due. So that when God looks on the horizon and he's looking for people who have honored those, his servants, he sees it as honor to himself, then he will say, bless that guy, bless that guy, bless him, honor him, bless him, prosper that, prosper that family, bless them very well, give them long life, help their children not to be fatherless, help them not to be motherless, help their children, even if they are fatherless, look after them, give them somebody to care for them who will not take advantage for them. Provide everything for them and let them be blessed. Hey, my God. Hey, my God. May that be my portion. May that be your portion. That in your life, forever in your life, you will honor whom God has given to be honored so that you can save yourself and your generation after you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Oh, blessed be God. Blessed be God. Father, we bless you and we thank you for everything you have spoken to us. By grace, by the grace, we shall do them. And by the grace of God, we shall walk along the path of honor and not the path of dishonor. Oh, mighty God. Give us grace. Give us strength. Deliver us Sometimes for being some way children, wayward children, recalcitrant children who never walk along the path of righteousness for your name's sake. I pray for everyone here. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for deliverance. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Clap for Jesus. Hands lifted. I want us all to pray this prayer. Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me from unrighteousness. Make me a pure child of the living God. Who loves God. Who honors his servants. And who follows your word. Please write my name in the book of life. Please never blot out my name from your book of life. And establish me in your house to be your servant, to be your follower. 
We believe the Word of God has come to you and you have been blessed by this sermon. Subscribe to this channel and get notified about every video posted.